Next Sunday, around the United States, in many local Catholic parishes and even some Catholic cathedrals with the bishop presiding over Mass, there is going to take place great blasphemy against God by assuming or even declaring that Martin Luther King Jr. is a saint in heaven, rather than praying for a soul, but yeah, rather than doing that work of mercy, by, by praying for souls in purgatory, they're going to honor, praise, celebrate, adore Martin Luther King Jr. who worked for Satan. And we need to talk about why this is so disgusting and blasphemous. Let's get into it. Hovering over the skies of a post-Christian society, we have spotted a man with a donut in one hand oh. and rosary beads in another. Child, I'm about to whoop Satan's behind. He is boldly proclaiming truth and reason like no rigid Catholic ever has before. The David L. Gray Show begins now. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Martin Luther King Jr. Day should not be celebrated or his name even mentioned in the liturgy because he's a plagiarizer or because he didn't believe in a bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, which he seems to have not to, or because he surrounded himself with Marxists and himself openly sympathized with some aspects of Marxism, nor am I going to use the perpetually corrupt FBI is my source of intel about people, despite the fact that they believe that Martin Luther King Jr. was a sexual deviant and a communist. Those are items of interest, but it is not the most serious things we need to know about Martin Luther King Jr., especially that we Catholics should consider before going around creating an, an idol and a saint out of him in the mass. To the contrary, it is the fact that he was a birth control, population control, Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanging champion eugenicist. And, and that is why I find it so utterly disgusting why anyone would dare celebrate him during the Catholic Mass. He was a eugenicist who loved Planned Parenthood. Listen to King's own words from a 1957 advice column. Um, published by Ebony Magazine, in which a mother wrote to King asking this question. We have seven children, and one is on the way. Our four-room apartment is bursting at the seams, and living space in Harlem is at a premium. I have suggested to my husband that we practice birth control, but he says that when God thinks we have enough children, he will put it to a stop. I've tried to reason with him, but he says that birth control is sinful. Is he right? To which King responded, disagreeing with the woman's husband that birth control is sinful, saying, quote, I do not think it is correct to argue that birth control is sinful. It is a serious mistake to suppose that it is a religious act to allow nature to have its way in the sex life. The truth is that the natural order is given us not as an absolute finality, but as something to be guided and controlled. In the case of birth control, the real question at issue is that between rational control and resort to chance. Another thing that must be said is that changes in social and economic condition make smaller families desirable, if not necessary, as you suggest. The limited quarters available in our large cities and and the high cost of living preclude such large families as were common a century or so ago. A final consideration is that women must be considered as more than breeding machines. It is true that the primary obligation of the woman is that of motherhood, but an intelligent mother wants it to be a responsible motherhood, a motherhood to which she has given her consent not a motherly motherhood due to impulse and chance. And this means birth control in some form. All these factors seem to me to make birth control rational and morally justifiable. There you have Martin Luther King Jr. commenting on the 
moral necessity of artificial contraception, saying it's not sinful, but it's rational. King also put his beliefs into action. He supported Planned Parenthood like no one else before him or during his time. And he also agreed to serve on a sponsoring committee of Planned Parenthood's study on contraception. King repeatedly wrote about how family planning programs are important. Again, writing about his hopes, quote, the federal and state governments will begin to appropriate large sums to educate people to the needs for such contraceptive devices. On November 5th, 1960, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote back to his college professor named Shivers concerning Shivers recommending him for a seat on a sponsoring committee of Planned Parenthood, saying, After giving the matter serious consideration, I am happy to say that it would be possible for me to serve on a sponsoring committee of the new study being made by Planned Parenthood Federation of America. I must say, that the decision was based on your high recommendation of this agency. Of course, I have always been deeply interested and sympathetic with the total work of Planned Parenthood Federation. So you may feel free to write Ms. Snyder concerning my acceptance. In 1956, Dr. King accepted the inaugural Margaret Sanger Award from Planned Parenthood, but he couldn't attend the war dinner, so he sent his wife instead, um, Coretta Scott King. You know, she comes on his behalf, and she reads the acceptance speech that he wrote. And in that speech, Martin writes, Margaret Sanger had to commit what was then called a crime in order to enrich humanity. And today, we honor her courage and vision for without them, there would have been no beginning. Our sure beginnings in the struggle for equality by nonviolent direct action may have been so resolute, if not the tradition established by Margaret Sanger and people like her. So King Jr. gives Margaret Sanger a eugenicist and a racist who wanted to exterminate blacks credit for the civil rights movement so now you see the relationship between the civil rights movement and abortion and the government and a black protestant church and why the black community in america is in the shape it is in today due to this legacy and he goes on to say that the american family the african-american community has again i quote a special and urgent concern with issues of family planning so birth control, contraception is good for black folk, according to Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. loved Margaret Sanger. He loved population control. He loved birth control. This man was a tool of Satan. Martin Luther King Jr., eugenicist, an advocate for contraception. That's who you want to crown a saint? That's who you're hanging up pictures up in your, in your, on your walls and in your church. That's who you're quoting in your homilies and your sermons this weekend. A legacy of death that's done nothing but to harm and enslave the black community under the guise of civil rights, which is really just a plot to destroy the church and to get blacks to depend on the government and turn to the government as their savior and as their moral guide. That's the legacy. That's the legacy you're celebrating. This legacy of death in child murder, in atheism. That's the legacy you're praising at Mass this weekend. How stupid can you be? I know, I know. People have been convinced by Miss Avita King, who is his niece, who works for Priest for Life, that her uncle was pro-life. I know that she told you that. I know that's what we heard, but I just read to you the actual documentation. What King actually wrote in his own words, with his own pen. He believed in population control and eugenics for the black community, for their benefit. Sure, I would like to believe if Martin Luther King Jr. were here today and saw the abortion genocide of Planned Parenthood and others, the organization he loved and had pushed on the black community, 
in, in, in the legacy of the rest of the, the Marxist black bourgeoisie class, the boule and all them, he, he might have had a change of heart. Maybe he would have, or maybe he would have pulled a Jesse Jackson and just kept quiet so not to lose influence with the Democrats. We don't know. All we have are the things he wrote and the things he stated to prove that he worked for Satan. Okay, here's the second reason why we need to stop these Martin Luther King Jr. feast days and solemnities in the Catholic Church, in the Catholic Mass. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was an anti-Catholic. He was anti-Catholic. Just as the man whose name he decided to rename himself after. The man was born Marvin King, but changed his name to Martin to match the person who he admired so much. Martin Luther, heretic, destroyer, divider, and agent of Satan. But, but just as Martin Luther worked to destroy Western civilization by using the church as his tool, so did Martin Luther King Jr. destroy the black community by using the black Protestant church as his tool. The legacy is so evident. Look at Atlanta, Georgia today, the capital of black homosexuality, black abortion. Look at his successor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, Raphael Warlock, a man who says that God approves of the choice of abortion. The legacy. This is the legacy you want to celebrate. Celebrating the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. is celebrating the legacy of Satan. Although Martin Luther King Jr. worked with Catholics in the so-called civil rights movement, although he met with Pope Paul John XXIII, for his entire life he worked with Catholics, priests, nuns, lay people. He still voluntarily chose to reject the Catholic Church and her teachings. Although the proximity of light really bears no, says nothing about the reception of light, King was someone who had access, again, to many priests. Again, he worked alongside priests and nuns and lay Catholics. Again, he met with the Pope. So he had access to make an uh, informed decision and chose to reject the whole Eucharist. And in rejecting Christ's church, he rejected Jesus Christ. So I'm not quite sure why Catholics are not praying for the soul of a man who could be in purgatory right now rather than idolize him. Great harm is being caused by the celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. We as Catholics, by not praying for a soul, have forsaken our duty to pray for the souls of the dead. And rather, what we've done, we've chosen this disgusting gravitation towards bringing the unholy days of the government into the church. Here's the final reason why we have to get away from bringing the world into the church. I find it contrary to the principal purpose of the liturgy, the liturgy of the mass. The principal purpose of the mass is to divinize us, to make us holy. But we've chosen instead to introduce into the liturgy the things of the world, things that are, are completely worldly, things that do not promote our holiness. Catholic priests ought not to be calling people into communion with Christ while also trying to bring them into communion with the world. Introducing things into the liturgy that pull us down into the darkness, into the depravity of the world. We have our saints. We have those that we know who are in heaven. We have the evidence that they are in heaven. We have our intercessors, our communion of saints, and we have our feast days of those holy souls. How about we celebrate those holy days? How about we celebrate those holy souls? How about we celebrate the lives of those who work for God and continue to work for God rather than celebrate those who work for the evil one? By introducing Martin Luther King Jr. into the liturgy, it, it thereby points to him as some sort of example for us to follow. And for all the aforementioned reasons, this is just demonic. And priests who do this are harming souls. No one should be following Martin Luther King Jr. anywhere because we don't know his final destination. Stop creating these liturgies that celebrate and embrace the world. Keep the liturgy pure, 
holy and other. Please, no more. Just stop. Jeez. That's all I know about that for now. But until then, and until next time, blessings and shalom to you and to yours.